morning. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, health challenges that you or a loved one may be confronting, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in our uh, second segment today. We've got a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour, Dr. Robert Marks, who has uh, written a non-fiction uh, book called Deadly Prescription. I usually don't read fiction books, but this one was very interesting. This is about the drug business. Dr. Marks is a real live flesh and blood MD, and he's got a very interesting story to tell. Uh, fictional account, but I think it might be based on uh, some non-fictional ideas. It's about uh, side effects, side effect cover-ups by pharmaceutical companies and pharmaceutical testing scandals. We'll be talking to Dr. Marks at the bottom of the hour, so we'll get to your phone calls here in our second segment at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have a success story you'd like to share, we especially love hearing success stories. Or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, or if you want to sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're entrepreneurially minded, if you like the idea of making your own hours, working out of the home, enjoying the tax benefits, enjoying all the tax benefits associated with having your own business, you want to check out the longevity business opportunity, particularly if you like health and nutrition or if health and nutrition and nutritional supplementation has benefited you or your loved ones and you want to help spread the word and make money at the same time, please call the Brightside Bend phone team at 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business. You can also sign up off our websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. You can purchase products off the websites as well. And you can also purchase our Truth Skin Health products, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, our retinol 5% gel, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, and our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream are all up at truthtreatments.com. 100% active and functional ingredients, no filler, no fluff, no water, no silicon, no oil, no preservatives, no nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. Every molecule in our Truth Skin Health products, our Truth Treatment, uh, Truth Treatment products are functional and active and will make a difference on your skin. Our products last anywhere from two to three to up to six months, even longer. Or I've had folks tell me that they've had their uh, retinol 5% gel for a year. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, silicon, oil, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we were last talking about the nature of disease as the end result of inf uh, an inflammatory process that is operating excessively. Inflammation means attack. So you can think of disease, no matter what it is, cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, autoimmune disease, whatever, skin diseases, eczema, psoriasis, you can think of all of these health challenges 
as a manifestation of long-term chronic attack from the outside. And this attack in large part is the result of food. I know we talk about this every day practically. I'm not Mr. Food Guy. I'm not Mr. You know, got to eat right, got to eat all the good foods. I've been known to eat all kinds of stuff, apple pies and pizza and hamburgers and french fries. It's not about guilt. It's not about good food, bad food. It's not about being a good person or a bad person or discipline or willpower. It simply represents an option if you are sick, an option from, uh, from the mainstream medical protocols and strategies of drugging and surgery. That's why it's so important to understand this food aspect. Food represents attack from the outside. Even good food represents attack from the outside. The body is designed to withstand attacks by mounting an immune response. Every time we eat, we mount an immune response, a defensive response, no matter what we're eating. An inflammatory response occurs postprandially. Prandial means eating. Postprandial inflammation means post-eating inflammation. Now, it's true sugar and fats and processed foods will, will uh, cause a, 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 a larger inflammatory response than good foods, so-called good foods, but any food can do it. Asparagus can do it. Broccoli can do it. And, of course, in, uh, emotional and mental factors also represent a type of attack. Mental and emotional factors represent a psychic assault. Make no mistake about it. These elements, psychological elements, they may be psychological, but they can be associated with activation of physiological inflammatory factors. That is, psychology leads to uh, physiology. So food represents an attack, bad thoughts, feelings, anger, rage represent attacks, and they will, uh, they will stimulate an inflammatory response too. And by the way, this link between stress and inflammation occurs at the genetic level. Stress is epigenetic. Psychological distress activates genes, it turns genes on and off. I'm talking psychological stress has a physiologic effect at the genetic level. Stress changes the gene activity of, of cells, and particularly of immune cells. Even when there's no infection or even when there's no trauma, Psychological stress can turn on an inflammatory response in the absence of trauma. According to a research study from Ohio State University and UCLA, this phenomenon was seen in mice as well as in blood samples from people who had, uh, were uh, uh, assessed to have a poor socioeconomic status. When scientists looked at the immune cells that were circulating in, in stressed mice, mice's bloodstream, they found that they had four times the frequency of inflammatory cells in their blood versus non-stressed mice. Study author John Sheridan, Dr. John Sheridan, he's a professor at Ohio State University and the associate director of the Institute for Behavioral Medicine and Research, concluded that, quote, there is a stress-induced alteration in bone marrow in both our mouse model and in chronically stressed humans that selects four cells that are going to be pro-inflammatory, unquote. And, quote, what this suggests is that if you're working with a really bad boss over a long period of time, that experience may play, play out at the level of gene expression in your immune system, unquote. A bad boss, a bad husband, a bad wife, a bad life leads to inflammation. Now, is this to beat anybody up? for who has a, some kind of long-term chronic inflammatory illness? No, it just means that we have options, choices. We don't have to be condemned to statin drugs. We don't have to be condemned to stents and bypasses and pacemakers and all the other barbaric medical strategies that physicians use, well-intentioned perhaps, barbaric nonetheless, strategies and protocols that you, physicians use to deal with heart disease. We don't have to be condemned. If you're on a statin drug and want to get off it, these represent tremendously valuable options, scientifically validated options. From the journal uh, Translational Psychiatry, April 2013, quote, elevated inflammation is present in men with current anxiety disorders, immune dysregulation, that is inflammation, is found especially in persons with late onset anxiety disorder, unquote. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll take a commercial break and come back with more good health information and your phone calls as well. All 
right, we are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we have lines open for you. We'll get your calls here in just a sec. We've got a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour, Dr. Robert Marks, author of the book Deadly Prescription, which is the story of uh, tainted drug studies. It's a fictional account uh, based in nonfiction, a story of tainted drugs and side effect cover-ups by pharmaceutical, two pharmaceutical giants, involves the Russian mob. I'm not sure how, how non-fictional that is. But anyway, Dr. Robert Marks is going to be with us at the bottom of the hour, and his book is Deadly Prescription. We'll get your phone calls here momentarily. 844-236-6010 is our number. I am Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products off our websites. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team. Love to have you on my team, 844-866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 is the phone number for the Bright Side Ben a phone team if you want to join our team and make some money selling longevity products, start a business, or even if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price, their number is 866-735-2470. They're friendly, knowledgeable. They know all about the longevity products and the longevity business. You can also sign up off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, hang on if you're on hold. We'll get you just a sec from uh, the journal... This is from a German journal, and I can't even pronounce this thing. Deutsch Zentrum für Herz Kreislauf Forschung. I'm not sure what the heck that means, but in any case, this was published on the website Science Daily. Heart failure is associated with loss of important gut bacteria. How do you like that? The link, once again, we see a link between the digestive system and disease. In this particular case, between the intestine or intestinal bacteria and heart failure. I am telling you people this idea that we can drug ourselves back to health with statin drugs and medicalize ourselves back to heart health with stents and pacemakers, it is so tragically unnecessary and misguided. Focus on the gut. Always, always, always focus on digestive health. This is the main source of the entrance of inflammatory factors. And given the fact that we're all subsisting on foods that did not exist a mere hundred, 150, 200 years ago in our million-year-old bodies, this should come as no surprise. This is why calorie restriction, ketogenic diets, fermented foods, all Mediterranean diets, all of these strategies are so effective for dealing with disease, all diseases, but particularly cardiovascular disease, also cancer, skin diseases. It, it represents such a powerful option for us when it comes to dealing with health challenges. This is from Science Daily. It's published uh, July 11th, 27, uh, 27, 2017. Okay, 844 is our number. Let us welcome my friend Carl the Truth Raider to the bright side. What's going on, Truth Raider? What do you got for us today? I got some uh, tips for you this morning. Yes, sir. And a sarconic warning. A what warning kind of warning? A sardonic, sardonic warning? Sardonic warning about the medical model and its ultimate goals for most Americans. Wait a minute. What does sardonic mean exactly? That's something that is serious, and uh, it, it derives from originally Dwight D. Eisenhower's warning to a nation. I remember this that. It would be the, type of the same type of thing, a warning to a nation. And all those okay. who listen into the bright side and listen to pharmacist Ben, he gives you great advice to keep you from the dangers and the potentials of what the medical model might do for all of us if we're not careful. Now, you're saying this is related to that Eisenhower speech about the military-industrial complex? Is that what you're talking about? It's, it's comparable to that. Okay. Let's put it that way. It's in comparison to that. But this is on the medical Wasn't that level. amazing that Eisenhower warned us about that in the 1950s, about the military-industrial complex pre-Vietnam? Right. That, that was Before he went out of impressive. office in late January 1961. Yep. That's, that was now, an amazing speech. Now, let me tell you what, what, the, what this might cost Americans could be as much as $2 million in insurance coverage that they're going to try to take from your insurance if you don't care for yourself. Well, By the time we get to our 70s and 80s, we have to really baby ourselves, to really take care of ourselves. But years, decades before that, of course, that's why you listen to the bright side. At, at my age, or folks that are younger than myself to take care of themselves, uh, to make sure 
that you do everything that you can possibly can to, to make sure that your health is, uh, uh, you're ahead of the curve. Let's, let's call it proactive care. Proactive care in, in the sense that by the time you reach your 70s and 80s, a lot of people wind up losing their homes. They wind up going into nursing homes. They wind up being being put on a medical plan, a health coverage plan. And through the years, the medical model and the systems and the care caregivers and, of course, the state-run hospitals or care homes are going to get as much as $2 million out of each and every one of us on average, you know, through property, through assets that we might, might have left for end of, uh, they call it end-of-life care. And uh, it, it's, it's frightening. Everything that you work for, everything that you saved up could be right. gone. And it if comes by fast. It comes by fast, too. I mean, life right. goes by so fast. First, you're 40 one day, you're 50 the next day, you're 60 the next day, and all of a sudden you're 70 and 75, and you're like, what the heck happened? And your body's falling apart. And I talk to people all the time, Truth Raider, who are in their 60s and 70s, and, and they've diagnosed with horrible diseases, and they want to know what they can do about it. And I'll tell you, the body can reverse. The body, if you, I've said this so many times before, the body can turn on a dime if we turn on a dime, but it's just so much harder to completely reverse um, bio, biological processes that have been uh, going on for decades. The time to take care of your health is in your 30s and your 40s and your 50s. That's the time to do it before you get diagnosed, God forbid, with cancer or heart disease or diabetes or some other tragic, uh, or have to endure some other tragic health challenge. The time to deal with it is when you're healthy. Of course, that's when we never think about these kinds kinds of things. So when you, when you first notice the body is breaking down, that's when it's time to take proactive measures. But you know what, Truth Raider, we're led to believe that we can just go to the doctor and somehow get a prescription drug to take care of our problems. This is craziness. Utter, utter, utter lunacy. This idea that we can become medicalized back to health. Now, of course, it's not just pure lunacy because we're manipulated to think that by people who are very, very smart, people who understand psychological hot buttons, uh, marketers and advertisers and drug companies, as well as lobbying groups like the Amer American Medical Association, were led to believe that the doctor represents good health. No, the doctor represents d disease management. We don't have a health care system. We have a disease management system. And the idea of a disease management system is to keep us in a state of a subclinical disease where we're constantly integrating with the medical model, where we're constantly waiting in line for prescriptions, where we're constantly dealing with insurance and Obamacare and Affordable Health Care Acts, and we're, we're constantly going to the doctor's office for so-called primary care to have, make sure that our test scores come out okay. The bottom line is, is that none of that helps. And all you got to do is look at the miserable state of Americans' health and juxtapose it with all of the doctoring and diagnostics and testing that we get. The fact of the matter is, is good health is a lifestyle issue, and that's what we've been talking about on, uh, you know, that's what we're talking about in, in terms of heart disease, but it's true about all health challenges. And I don't think, I hope I'm not coming across as being mean-spirited in any way. This is good news because it represents our power. It represents options. It represents choices for us to take our health back into our own hands. And ultimately, nobody cares. Carl, the truth writer, nobody cares about us like we do. Your doctor doesn't care about you like you do. Only our mothers, maybe. And that's pretty, or, or our spouses, perhaps. Yeah. All right, truth writer, I got to motivate. We got a commercial break. We got a guest. Thanks for your call, buddy. Uh, we got a, uh, Dr. Robert Marks is going to come on at the bottom of the hour to talk about his book, Deadly prescriptions. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. Eight four four eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. I thought we'd have Dr. Robert Marks, author of Deadly Prescription, on, but he is somehow not available. We're going to keep trying to uh, see if we can get him. In the meantime, if you've got questions or comments or success stories or anything you'd like to talk to us about, eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. If we don't hear from Dr. Marks here uh, in short order, we're just going to have to postpone him until uh, another day. His book's kind of interesting, though. I hope we get him on. Dr. Marks is a surgeon. Uh, he's written a book about uh, drug testing and about cover-ups in drug testing. And this is something that occurs more frequently than we'd like to think. Fraud, outright fraud, and also what's called cherry-picking. Cherry-picking studies. Drug companies are allowed to pick out the studies they like when it comes to uh, approval of their drugs. 
You know, when they do testing, when, uh, when, when a new drug comes out, the last stage in drug testing is us. That's right. That's why sometimes a drug will be out for five or ten years, and they'll say, you know what? That's not necessarily a good drug. People are getting sick. We've got to take that drug. We've got to take people off of that drug. There's no prescription drugs that you want to be on for a long period of time, period. There's no chronic drug, drugs that you want to be on chronically for when they tell you you're going to be on a drug for the rest of your life. But the worst kind of drugs are the drugs that are new drugs, drugs that have only been out for a couple of years because... Patients who take those drugs, patients who are prescribed those drugs, are the beta test. They're the test, and drug companies are using us to see how safe or how effective their prescription drug is. So no prescription drugs that you're on for a long period of time are good, but specifically and especially drugs that come out that are new, drugs that have just come out. And when I just come out, I'm talking about within like five or ten years. If you're on a prescription drug, make no mistake about it. Your job, as a, if you're interested in staying healthy, your job is to figure out how to wean yourself off of that. And we can help you do that, and we'll take your calls here, because I don't think we're going to hear from Dr. Marks. We'll take your calls at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If we don't get any calls, I'll just continue talking about what I want to talk about and uh, read some studies here. And also, I've got a whole bunch of letters. I get lots of letters from folks to try to return... I try to uh, uh, call people back, and when you write me letters, by the way, put your phone number in the letters, because I don't like, I got too much stuff to write as it is, and I don't know how to type, and it's just a big pain in the butt. So put your phone number on your letters if you're sending me notes. We'll try to get to a couple letters here today if we don't get any calls at 844-236-6010. I want to remind you to check out our True Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com and also our longevity products at criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, and brightsideben.com. We've got blog posts as well as news stories and also videos, lots of good videos at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. I also have a YouTube channel. In fact, if you just Google Pharmacist Ben Fuchs, you'll get a zillion hits or pages and, and blog posts and videos and all kinds of stuff, page after page after page of good health information that I've done, uh, that I put out over the last uh, maybe six or seven years. Just Google, put pharmacistben.com in your search engine. Okay, so let's get to a couple, of, well, let's get to a couple stories and then, uh, and then we'll continue. Uh, if we don't have any calls anyway, we'll continue talking about inflammation and the inflammatory aspect of disease. We do have lines open, by the way, 844-236-6010. From, uh, this is from the journal Immunity. I love this. Research reveals surprising health benefits to chewing your food. Check this out. Scientists have shown that chewing your food properly can boost your mouth's immune system to protect you from illness. A study led by teams at the University of Manchester National Health uh, and the National Institute of Health in the United States revealed that a specific type of immune cell can be stimulated as you chew. This is what I was talking about earlier. When the body, when food gets into the body, when the body has signals that food is about to enter, boom, an immune response is amped up. An immune response is stimulated. This makes perfect sense because when you think about it, food is something from the outside coming into the inside. The body has evolved over millions of years to protect the sacred space, which is the blood. So as soon as it gets the signal that food is coming in, incoming, the defense department goes, uh, is stimulated, is activated, and simply chewing your food can turn on this immune response. According to researchers, the gut and the skin both are stimulated, the uh, bacteria in the gut and the skin both are stimulated by activity that occurs through chewing, through the entrance of food. This is so important. That's skin bacteria, too. And by the way, more and more we're learning about the skin microbiome and its relationship to skin diseases. So when we talk about eczema and psoriasis as being related to food, even chewing activity can modify bacteria on the skin that can affect skin diseases. Chewing your food also helps pre-digest your food. Chewing your food can make it easier for diabetics to absorb or utilize sugars. Chewing your food, there's, a, there's a carbohydrate metabolizing enzymes in your saliva. So chewing your food can reduce the load on your pancreas. Chewing your food can also reduce the amount of food that you're eating. This is why food processors and fast food companies put uh, uh, a softening agents, chemicals called phosphates, in their chicken and in their burgers and in their bread so that we don't have to chew as much so we can eat more. The more you chew, the less you eat and the less money a fast food company is going to make. Which is why chewing your food can also be a great diet tool. You'll eat less food. 
when you chew your food. You'll stimulate appetite suppressant hormones that are normally activated by the entrance of food. As we eat food, appetite suppressant hormones are, uh, if we eat the right foods, appetite suppressant hormone chemistry is stimulated. And that means that our shutoff, our appetite shutoff point will be reached quicker if we chew our food. If the body has time to recognize that food is coming in, it will have time to secrete chemicals that shut, that shut off our appetite. So chewing your food is not just a great way to, to protect your pancreas or to help your pancreas. It's not just a, a great way to help your immune system, but it's also a great way to reduce your appetite and eat less food. That's from the journal Immunity, uh, published here uh, January, January 2017. All right, now we got a bunch of calls here at 844-236-6010. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Joe. In Tennessee. Good morning, Joe. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi. Good morning, pharmacist Ben Fuchs. Yes, this is Joe. I have a question. I've yes, been ma'am. working yes. on doing a food elimination diet thing, nice. and my husband and I we eat a lot of chicken. Um, mm. We don't fry it. Um, okay. We bake it, and we make you know, like tomato soups and different things out of it. But I've noticed that for the last year or so, I've been getting a lot of flare-ups of acne under my chin. When you eat the so chicken. I, yeah, and I, I called the company, a very well-known company, and they said that they feed their chickens corn and soy and wheat and oil. I'm like, uh-oh. So, <laughs> uh-oh is right, exactly. Yeah, chickens are supposed to, chicken. chickens are supposed to eat insects. Yeah, but is that a serious concern for me? Because yes. I like, I like eating po- eggs. It's potentially a serious concern. Now, chicken is just chicken. You know, when you think about chicken, it's just meat, right? And usually yeah. people are not going to react to meat, you, and that, which is kind of interesting. We can react to lots of vegetables, but we don't really react to meat very much. Meat tends to be non-reactive. Now, meat's a little hard to digest, and if your intestine and uh, you're not operating, uh, your intestine's not firing on all cylinders, you've got some kind of intestinal problem, you may not digest your meat as well, and what that can mean is meat can putrefy chicken included, all meat, can putrefy inside the intestine, and that is most certainly not a good thing. And that can be related to skin problems, but more likely, it has to do with things that are actually injected into the chicken, not necessarily fed to the chicken, but injected into the chicken. And and corn, by the way, can be a problem too. Hang on, Joe, we gotta take a break. We'll finish up when we come back. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll return right after this. Don't go away. Back on the bright side, I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Joe in Tennessee. Hello there, Joe. So you Hi, break are, are you linking are you linking your breakouts to the chicken? I it seems like because I stopped for um, like I said for a week and everything is clearing up under my chin. Well, that's the best um, so that's the I mean, best indicator. I, I, that's the best indicator. Let your body be a laboratory. As it, that's what we learned in pharmacy school. Always test things out yourself. Uh, so you know, if you're not breaking out, if you break out when you eat chicken and not breaking out when you stop, I'd say that's a good bet. Keep in mind, as I was saying before the break, chicken manufacturers are allowed manufacturers are allowed to inject things into their chicken. It's called plumping. I don't know if you ever heard of this. Uh, they're allowed to inject. Uh, liquids and chemicals and uh, uh, salt brine and sodium phosphate and monosodium glutam MSG and excitotoxins. They inject all kinds of stuff. And you know what's even scarier is they're allowed to call their chicken natural even after a, a, a certain amount of it, a, a certain amount of the chicken is, in, uh, is really stuff that's been injected. So you got to be very, very careful with chicken, uh, with meat in general, but chicken especially. Uh, particularly because of this whole plumping phenomenon. Google uh, chicken and plumping. There's a lot of research that's been done on that. So, you know, you think you're just getting chicken, right? And, but you're not. Well, you're getting conceivably, potentially, hundreds of different chemicals that are injected into the chicken. It's, it's a huge problem. Significant amounts of your chicken weight is actually this, uh, this injected plumping substance. Okay, well, what about on the package, Ben? It has no antibiotics ever. It well, has that's good. All, veg- all vegetarian diet. Well, chickens aren't vegetarians. <laughs> that's great, but chickens aren't <laughs> supposed to eat just vegetables. You think chickens are vegetarians? They eat, they eat meat. They eat insects. 
You know, it's funny about this word vegetarian and the term vegetables. We get, you know, you see these things, uh, vegetarian and vegetable, and it's like synonymous in our brains anyway. It's synonymous with all good, but it's not true. You know, chickens aren't supposed to just be eating corn. Corn can actually uh, exacerbate skin problems. There's, there's not exactly gluten, perhaps, in corn, but there's gluten-like substances in corn that can cause problems. It could easily be something along those lines. Bottom line is, if you, if you eat the chicken and you break out and you don't eat it when you don't break out, chances are pretty good it has something to do with, with what's in the chicken. And given, the chicken or give, uh, given that there's a lot of stuff in the chicken that's not chicken, it's a, a very good possibility that you might be uh, reacting to something. Okay, what about what you have as far as um, your, your skin regimen? Is there something that I can work on? Or yeah, absolutely. But keep in mind, the skin grows from the inside out. Now, what, my, what I've done with my True Skin Health products is I put high concentrations of skin-friendly active ingredients, specifically retinol and vitamin C, the two most important ingredients for the skin, topical ingredients for the skin. However, if you're breaking out as a, due to a response, in other words, your body is responding to something, vitamin C and vitamin A, as important as they are from a nutritional standpoint, aren't going to make a lot of difference in terms of your body's response. The breakouts are actually one of the ways the body is protecting itself. It's pushing the toxins out. So you don't want to suppress that if you've got toxicity. What the vitamin C and vitamin A, my true skin health products will do, is they'll accelerate healing of the skin after your breakouts, and they'll also have anti-aging properties and skin softening and moisturizing properties and give you some long-term health benefits. But the breakouts themselves are part of the inflammatory response and they represent protection. And you don't necessarily want to suppress that. What you want to do is you want to eliminate the cause of the protection or the reason that the body needs to protect, it, protect itself, but you don't necessarily want to suppress that inflammatory response without eliminating the cause. Now, not to say vitamin C and vitamin A are not important. They're extremely important for healthy skin. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry, Ben. Also, what about the eggs? I used to eat a lot of eggs, too, in where between four to maybe eight, you know, I, every day. So. You know, eggs are tricky. I'll tell you why. First of all, they are wonderful, powerful, important foods. They're probably, if they're not nature's most powerful foods, they're certainly in the top three or four, in the list of the top three or four most important foods to eat. That having been said... If you ha a lot of people have egg allergies, eggs eggs are a living protein essentially. They they were living anyway before we before we eat them, and they can have things that the body can react to. The body reacts to proteins, especially high protein foods that aren't cooked, uh, eggs, dairy, that kind of thing. Uh, meat is one of the few high protein foods that the body does not react to, as I was saying earlier. But eggs are very reactive, or can we can react to those very easily? Also, dairy, eggs and dairy are very similar in that way. So you got to see how you do. Another thing about eggs is sometimes we react to different forms of eggs. Some people will react to scrambled eggs. Other people will react to omelets. Other people will react to soft-boiled eggs or raw eggs. So just because you react to one type of egg or one way that you've cooked an egg doesn't mean you're going to react to all the different ways. So see if you can experiment with how you process your egg. You never want to cook your egg too much, though, because that can denature those proteins, those very valuable proteins, and it can also turn cholesterol from a safe and benign substance into a dangerous substance called oxycholesterol. That's why you don't want to heat your eggs too much. Always go soft boiled or poached and play around with the dosage with the way you uh, with the way you cook your eggs a little bit and then also sometimes using digestive enzymes with your eggs can alleviate some uh, uh, reactions or, or help mit minimize any reactions you might have sometimes. You got to experiment with that a little bit. But if you have uh, again, it's like with you were what you were saying with chicken Eat the eggs, see how you do. If you eat eggs and you break out, chances are good that you're having a problem with eggs, at least in that form. So you play with the form or eliminate them entirely if you're breaking out. But you've got to test yourself. Let your body be a laboratory. You be the test. Don't, don't need to waste money on some allergy test. You be the test. Okay, pharmacist Ben Fuchs, I'll be a lab rat for myself. <laughs> okay, good. You're a lab rat for you. Thank you, Joe. Okay. Thanks for your call. Thank Appreciate you, sir. it. Take bye care. Bye-bye. Okay. All right, let's move to Missouri and welcome Johnny B., to the bright side. What's going on, Johnny? Hey, good morning, Ben. Uh, good morning. Wow, that is so awesome. What's I had that? a friend that was raising chickens back in yeah. the 90s, 80s and 90s, and he was feeding the chickens comfrey. He was feeding them what? Comfrey. Oh, wow. Interesting. Okay. Did you hear the show yesterday? We talked to the comfrey lady? Absolutely. And okay, I've got two very... topics I want to discuss. Okay. I'm actually a survivor of hepatitis C okay. slash 
stage four cirrhosis of the liver. Okay. Were you drinking? Without any, without you... any proof in causation. You weren't drinking no, out a lot of alcohol? I'm not a teetotaler, but I've, okay. I've always had problems with alcohol. Okay. Historically. Okay. Uh, we can never nail down causation for the diagnosis. But once I fired Western medicine okay. and started my own education, I learned it was just like you were saying yesterday. It's our diets, guys. It's mm -hmm. fatty liver. It's not mm -hmm. hepatitis C. Yes, that's, that's right. That's just an excuse. To sell you a, a $100,000 a year drug. Oh, yeah. They give me a five-year death sentence. If they would have treated me and I would have tried to live my life under their guidance, I can guarantee I wouldn't live five years. I was that bad off. Anyway. So what'd you do? Oh, complete lifestyle change. Uh, nice. Detox, you know, change my diet completely around, quit eating fast food, quit eating Casey's, you know, the little microwave uh, burritos. Oh, my God, I was a dog on them. How old were you when you made these changes? Um, 42, 43. Okay, and what, what did you notice about your health when you made those changes? Uh, I got younger. Everyone okay. was complimenting me on how much younger I looked. How about your health uh, markers? Sharper, sharper focus. How about in terms of health I markers? I'm, I'm not, I don't have sickness in my okay. health record. Got it. Okay, I'm all injuries and traumatic care. So I'm just naturally healthy. That's so what would, diagnosis was so far out of left field on us. What would you tell somebody who's in their 40s or in their 50s and they're like, well, you know, I got diagnosed with an illness. It's too late for me to change. There's nothing I could do about it. What would you tell them? Two things. If they tell you not to look someplace, look. Okay? And do a serious evaluation on what your lifestyle is and whether or not it's actually organic i.e. helping you live, helping you into a place of stasis. Are you on any medication now? No, sir. Awesome. Well, good quit, deal, Johnny. I quit doing everything, over the counter, under the counter, around the counter. That's awesome. Hey, listen, had, Johnny, listen, man. If you will send me an email, send an email to ben at ksco.com, put your mailing address in there and your phone number, I'll send you out a free jug of Beyond Tangy Tangerine on me. I appreciate it, dude. All right, Ben, ben at ksco.com. Put your address and your phone number there, okay? All right. All right, man, thanks so much for your call. Uh, thanks. I appreciate you. Thank you for your call. Appreciate it. All right, that's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. Apologize if I left you on hold. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com for all the longevity products. And love to have you on the Bright Side Ben team. You could sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team off the websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Have yourselves a beautiful, wonderful, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.